Cool. All right, guys. Well, welcome to another episode of Kicking It with Quran. This week we have a special guest, Jag Brar. Uh, he's an architect in OCI. You. Jag, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Jag, as Quran said. So I'm uh, one of the networking people at OCI. Um, I've been here over three years, three and a half years. I have to say this is the best job of my life. Uh, Are you just trying to sell actually, Oracle? No, <laughs> I am trying to sell Oracle to employees we want to hire. Right. Potential. And employees. three and a half years is basically when this whole thing got kickstarted. Yeah, right? so I started uh, when we were about maybe 35 to 40 people. So uh, there were people. In here all before, of OCI. On all of OCI. Right. And now it's how many? 5,000. 5,000. So it's been a pretty fun ride. Um, my experience, is, my background is primarily um, physical networking. I have a CS and electrical engineering background as in schooling, but uh, work experience wise is physical networking. Um, before OCI, I was at um, Arista Networks, and there I supported all of our cloud, large cloud customers, uh, Arista customers, in particular Azure. Right. Um, before that, I was at AT&T Labs, and I worked on the LTE uh, network for AT&T. Cool. And before that, I was at AWS for a long time. Uh, I was at Amazon for nine and a half years. And wow. Before that, some service providers. So nine and a half years, if I think back to the day, 10 years ago, Amazon was probably the only player in town, right? Mm -hmm. And they were just getting kicked off. And yeah. So I was there from the very beginning of AWS. And now you're at the yeah. very beginning of OCI. OCI. <laughs> and it's been a fantastic ride. Cool. So tell us a little bit about what you work on OCI. Like, uh, you know, what are some of the things mm -hmm. uh, that you work on? So I was one of the first networking people in our um, OCI network engineering organization. Um, so most of my work is around um, the design of the physical network. And I've had some contributions in the virtual networking space as well, but mostly in the physical. Um, and there it's about uh, the topology of the network, the placement of um, data centers, placement of regions, um, interconnectivity between data centers, interconnectivity between regions, uh, choice of routing protocols, choice of chipsets and network um, topology, routing protocols, uh, equipment vendors, right. uh, and then parts of automation of our network. Yeah, so most people, right, like <clears throat> I come from Azure prior as well, and you know, most people when they think about cloud, they, they, they automatically think about compute. Mm -hmm. I'm spinning up a VM, That's I'm spinning true. up some servers, yeah, yeah. but nobody really thinks about the network, it's right? It's really critical. And really, at the end of the day, network is the core backbone of cloud in general. It is, and it's, it's hidden. But it is the, the key enabler, and that's where you can really distinguish yourself because it does matter how you connect the compute together. Topology, turns out, is very important. Right. There are ways of connecting compute together that will not scale. Mm. There are ways of connecting it together where it will scale effectively for as, as far as you want to. So there are classes of topology. Turns out, if you study topology as a network topology, there are many topologies. There's you know meshes of many kinds, planar, 2D, 3D, there's toroids. And it matters, right, when you're toroids. building a data center. It does right? matter. And it turns out there are topologies that are really well suited right. for cloud. Yeah. In particular, Clore class topology lends itself really well. And that's to, what we did, right, that's for what OCI. We did. And uh, we went with the very purest CLO network. Some people call it CLOS a network. And um, we tried Google to- Google that if you don't know. Yeah, and we, and we tried to keep it really simple because uh, simple networks are easier to reason against and, and automate. And automation is fundamentally important to us. Like this is the one network I've been where we started day one with automation. So we have a full concept of a network model. Right. And the network is driven from the model. So if, so if, we, so if we decided to go Klaus, right, which mm -hmm. is completely flat, uh, you know, non-oversubscribed, that's kind of our promise, right? Why wouldn't everybody just do it? Like, if it's just that simple, then why doesn't everybody, you know? Good point. So, so we work very hard to, to not oversubscribe. In particular, we don't oversubscribe within the data center. In particular, we don't build our designs with oversubscription in mind. Instead, we build our designs with not oversubscribing in mind. Um, and that helps the customers, right? That helps Their the workload. customer. And we, try, we strive for and... predictability, performance isolation, avoiding the noisy neighbor problem. Uh, we've heard from customers they really care about it, so we try to offer that to them. Um, so you ask the question, why, would, why wouldn't everybody do it? Right. And I think people are generally moving in that direction. And in the end, it turns out to be a cost versus performance trade-off. We've uh, error on the size, uh, side of performance, not cost, because we believe that customers really do want the high performance and the performance isolation. 
And that's like that's how people design it on prem today, right? Exactly. They don't oversubscribe on prem today. Most Correct. of them. Yeah, or they're trying not to. Uh, and 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 uh, so we we try to give people superior experience at the at the expense of maybe spending a bit more in our, in our network. But we believe it's the right trade off. And you know, if you do the right thing, you can get your cost, you know, down enough where it's it's not a big factor, which we've done. So we we believe we have a very good cost basis. We're very competitive. Our competitors, right, I right. think. We just you have you have to do more work. Right, and it, it even gets better, right? Because our fast connect, for example, you pay per poor. You don't pay correct. a bandwidth cost. So, very good so point. So over we, time, yeah. So we try not to nickel and dime the customer. We try to offer them a simpler billing and metering model. Um, like you know, we don't have usage there. It's, right. it's a simpler thing for customers to reason against. So we're not trying to get customers in any way. If, if anything, we want to make it really easy. Remove roadblocks from our path, from the path of customers to use the cloud. We want to offer superior service. We want to be better. Right. That's so let's goal. talk about that, right? So we talked about the fact that you know three years ago we made a decision to go non-oversubscribe, flat, predictable, high performance, and then you know you know recently we just uh, you know we're 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 I think uh, this week or next week uh, we're going to be at supercomputing in the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks, and we're talking about RDMA, right? Yep. And RDMA I think is is I guess if we look, take a look at our history, and where we are today with RDMA, it's 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 a it's it seems to be the right progression, right? Mm -hmm. Like. We we designed for high performance. Now, now the next step in high performance really is RDMA. Right. Like, actually, for folks that don't know RDMA, let's let's describe what RDMA yeah. is. So I want to say a couple of things. Um, I'll get to RDMA shortly. But one thing I want to say is we 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 do strive not to oversubscribe for the customer. But there are places in our infrastructure where it is oversubscribed, like our backbone interconnecting our regions. You know, just out of necessity of you know large distances. You know, you have no choice. But there, what we do is. We again try not to nickel and dime customers in terms of billing. We do a good job of traffic engineering. We do, do a good job of over provisioning. So rest assured, the customers should not have to worry about capacity right. and throughput. So that's within our, a data that's center, though, within, within a, a data, data center, center, we do not oversubscribe. Especially because it really matters, right, when you're running a Correct. workload. Correct. Right? We don't oversubscribe. We right. don't intend. So right. coming back to the question about RDMA, so just uh, providing a quick refresher on RDMA. RDMA stands for Remote Direct Memory Access. So it's effectively doing DMA across hosts. Multiple, across. multiple nodes, multiple exactly. instances. Exactly, right. and very common in, in high performance workloads, um, also very common in Oracle Exadata workloads. Exadata, right. And other applications We've like done, that. we've been doing Exadata forever. And right? it's a very successful product, and it uses RDMA on the back end right. to deliver very high, millions and millions of IOPS. Very successful product. So we've been hearing from customers, including internal customers like Exadata, like that Exadata. RDMA is right. something they really care about. So you've been championing this internally, and you've convinced enough people in Oracle to do, do it. RDMA. <laughs> so we've um, built an RDMA network, and there again, our goal is to offer very high performance, yep. uh, 100 gig interfaces, extremely low latency, um, and you will see our latency to be better than almost anybody in terms of our competition, and very comparable to your on-premise workloads. Right, and that's because that's mostly where people are comparing this stuff against, right? Yep. Most of our customers, I think you'd agree, are people that are really transitioning from on-prem to, to the cloud, because you know, most people, again, you know, have this view, this world view that, hey, look, infrastructure is solved, mm -hmm. it's done, you know, we're already moving to the cloud, we're moving yep. to the commodity cloud, right? But if that was the case, everybody would have already moved to the cloud. Right. But that's not the case today. Exactly. Right? There are these one of those reasons is this. Yeah, right? there are applications that need special performance properties, like RDMA. Right. right? And generally, cloud networks do not offer RDMA. For, and there's many reasons for it, right? Because RDMA requires special treatment of traffic in the network. In particular, um, you know, sometimes people have used technologies like priority flow control or explicit congestion notification and Rocky. Which, is, which stands for RDMA over converged Ethernet. It's an emergent standard. And that's something we've paid a lot of attention to. We've been working on it for, I've personally been working on it for almost five years now. And uh, there are peers of mine who've worked on it longer. So there, um, we've done a lot of work in uh, getting our network Rocky V2 compliant. Right. Um, and, and that's what, we've, that's what that's we're going to be doing, right? That's what we're launching, right? yes. And so <clears throat> when, we, when we did this work, right, um, Rocky V2, there's many other different alternatives, right? Correct. Now, most people on-prem deploy something like an InfiniBand, Infiniband stack, yep. or you know, there's, there's other stuff people Correct. talk about, like OmniPath, and yes. you know, iWarp, and yeah. 
give us a worldview of like why some things work and why th some things don't. Yeah, so right? all of those technologies have their places. Like you know, I'm sure there are networks that use Omnipath, but that isn't something that's commonly deployed. Right. Uh, we that's also to, emerging, right? In emerging. Some sense. We want it to be uh, on, on a network. We want to build a network that customers can rely on for um, very consistent performance. Like it wouldn't be completely different than what they're used to on premise. Like it, they won't have to learn new technologies. They wouldn't need new software. So, so we like want to, IB verb support. Exactly. And, we wanted to have IB verb support. We want the MPIs to be the MPIs that are commonly used to using. So we didn't want to make, we wouldn't want to put hurdles in the so path that means, of the customer. Right? So Rocky right. and iVorp were the two right. obvious choices. Right? Or InfiniBand. Or, or InfiniBand, good point. So right. those are the three obvious choices. And we've chosen to go with the Rocky V2 because in terms of um, the criteria we set for ourselves, we wanted large scale. We wanted to be able to offer right. rack. Thousands of cores. Thousands of cores. Right. And in that case, that kind of lend itself well for Ethernet versus IB. You could do it with IB as well, but we believe in order for us to offer the right cost, performance, and scale properties that we wanted to cost offer. Cost is a big thing, too. It's I mean, there's a big thing. cost difference between an Ethernet Correct. network and an infinite band network Correct. as well. Plus, what about what about things like, you know, we wanted to offer it on our best of class exactly. bare metal nodes, right? Yes. So that doesn't really lend well Correct. to something like so an So there IB are other snack. things that play here as well. So performance, cost, and 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 you know, there are other properties that may not be as visible to customers that in the end they should really care about. Like us being able to automate the network well, us being able to monitor the network really well. And we built, we spent the last three and a half, four years building the software tool chain for automation and monitoring, which I believe is probably the best, at least I'm sure, the best I've ever seen in the industry. So we, I'm really proud of our automation and our monitoring story. We wanted to be able to leverage all that, all that four years this. of work, three right. and a half years of work. Right. And that's really based on Ethernet networks, right? right. Merchant Silicon Ethernet cloth based network. So right. we, that's the design paradigm we've gone with. So people get best of both worlds, exactly. really, right? And we did look at iWarp as well. We really would like iWarp to be more industry prevalent and more well supported. It's just unfortunately that's not the case yet. Right. So Rocky V2 is where most of the consensus in the industry is emerging. That's where the customers are going. So, you know, that's and then, and then from what we've seen, right? I mean, I think we're going to be publishing a lot of different types of benchmarks. Correct. Because every benchmark has a different kind of, you know. Uh, environment, but essentially what we're seeing is people are seeing our numbers be very comparable very to their on-prem in some sense even better yeah, we'll, for some workloads. We would love to, to <laughs> surprise our customers positively. Right, right, right. That's so, the goal. So that's and we're cool. going to keep growing it, right? This, this is this first offering. We're going to do more and more work. Right. Where do, you think, where do you think the next big, you know, we talked about bare metal. Mm -hmm. We talked about kind of the isolated network. We talked about performance. Then we talked about RDMA, kind of a gradual progression of different types of things, right? Mm -hmm. We went and solved the general purpose. Then we Correct. solved kind of the specialized thing. Where do you see this stuff going in the future? Like in the next couple of years, next year to the next five years, right? Like what's the big... You know, big things to be solved in the networking world, right? It's physically or otherwise. Yeah, I think the big things to solve there, and stepping back, not just in terms of RDMA, but stepping back, I think the big technology transitions coming is 400 gig is around the corner. So, 400 single? 400, 400 gig in the core of the network right. is around the corner. Right. 100 gig host NICs, not just for RDMA, but for, for general purpose cloud use, are, is around the corner. Right. You know, we, all, we have internal deployments of 100 gig, and you know, at some point we'll offer that to customers as well. What, you know. Actually, why can't you use, let's say, an RDMA NIC for general purpose? Uh, you, if you wanted, like, massive, you, massive You very well of, can. You very well can. There's right. nothing stopping you from doing that. It's just, um, it comes down to, you know, the, the engineering trade-off of cost versus um, customer demand, right? There's, right, there's right. sufficient customer demand that drives volume, that lowers the uh -huh. cost, and then not, all of a sudden becomes cost competitive. So we so see the bad it's is just an incremental thing, right? It's an over, incremental. Over it's a natural years, progression. Natural if, like, progression. If, I, if I could use the word Moore's law, some people will <laughs> in, yell in, at me in for the saying networking that. side, yeah. Uh, Moore's law in networking. Some people may yell at me for saying that, but in the end, it's the natural progression of the technology, right? Right. Silicon scale is getting finer and finer. We get more and more ports, more I/O on the chips, and similarly on the NICs, so the network should grow. So we should expect customers. We customers should expect us to keep giving them higher and higher throughput. Um, more and more ports, lower and uh, lower cheaper latency, cheaper and cheaper cost per bit, and, right. and lower latency. Very good point, uh, and that's something we care a lot about because our customers care. We expect to keep driving the latency down, even without RDMA. Even without RDMA, right. and in particular, we really want to keep driving the latency down in RDMA land. And we have ideas there, but 
I wouldn't want to speak about it yet because you know I don't want to talk about ideas that may not see fruition. But we have many ideas there, right? And we, on behalf of the customer, we really want to innovate there and make it even better. Cool. Well, that was really fascinating. I know we could keep going on and yeah. on about this for like hours, right? And we have. So um, yes. thanks for joining us today. My you know, pleasure. Um, why don't you go try out the new RDMA offering that we have? Uh, come talk to us at Supercomputing and. Uh, uh, see you next time. And tell us what you think. Yeah, tell us what you think. Thank you. Write to us. Talk yes. to us. Thank you. See you later.